Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very interesting topics to go over. But the first thing I wanted to address is this uh, quote-unquote beef that I apparently have with uh, Milos Archer. So a lot of you guys asked me what happened, why is Milos calling me out on the Manus podcast. Uh, if you guys didn't see this, let me play it for you first, and then I'm going to explain. I, I'm quite irritated about, you know, guys trying to get that clickbait and drive uh, the, the people to go on the channels, you know, with some bombastic news and, you know, so, so first, Ivan, who I like, is my countryman, I coached him before, I trained him before, and I, I like the guy, we text each other, so he has access to me at any time, he can, you know, confirm with me if he wants, but he didn't, he puts, oh, you know, uh, three, four days ago, like, Pierre Cruz got the visa, and I call him right away, like, oh, I thought, uh he said, why do you do that? I mean, that's a clickbait and that's not honest reporting. But you just want to drive but, but that's But that's YouTube, Milos. Yeah, no, but it shouldn't be that way. You should do the right thing, you know? Of course, if, so, of course. But if you, if you uh, get the people that are gonna jump in because of it uh, and you're lying to them, uh, you know, it's it's a, it's a bad thing. You Especially mentioned, you, you already wanna... know. Mm. You can confirm with one call. Alright, so I'm sure most of you have already seen this because if you are a hardcore bodybuilding fan, you're watching my channel, you're probably watching the Manus Podcast as well. And once again, a lot of you guys ask me what happened, especially my followers from Balkans over here. Because guys, over here in Balkans, Milo Sharchev is literally a legend. All the bodybuilders from over here, all the people who lived basically, are looking at him as a legend, as a living legend, as a, as a bodybuilding god basically. I mean, he achieved so much, he's the only guy from over here that accomplished so much and he's like one of the most popular names in, in bodybuilding like in the world not just from serbia or from balkans and i was lucky enough to be one of the few people who actually know him personally who were coached by him especially younger people this was like four years ago before i even started competing and i was just starting my channel so i was basically just a random kid that lifts and i hired him for for a few months and then later he came to Serbia and he actually invited me, we trained together, he trained me. So I was super happy to actually know him personally, to have trained with him, to have him in my contacts, to talk to him. He supported me when I competed, like he always left some nice comments, supporting comments in my photos from competitions and so on. And what happened basically is a couple of days ago, like two weeks ago, I posted this video. And originally there wasn't a question mark in the thumbnail or the title. I changed that afterwards, after I spoke to him. If you guys watched my video, you probably remember that this Iranian page, who also announced at one point that Hadi got a visa, and they were actually right about it, they also posted that Bakrus got the visa, so I assume there probably is some truth in it. I know that Milos didn't post anything, I know that Bakrus didn't announce it, I thought maybe they were waiting for a special moment to announce this, like on a podcast or something, or like because of the time difference, Milos still uh, is like sleeping, didn't get a message, I don't know, but basically I made a, I made a video, I didn't ask him, I didn't ask him to confirm, and uh, he got mad, he basically got mad at me for not confirming with him, and you know, he has the right to be mad, honestly. The reason why I didn't ask him is basically because I don't want to bother him, you know? Like, he is, for me, he is the legend of bodybuilding, and like, I don't want to be one of the like million guys who text him, uh, who, who bother him, who are boring him, I don't know, that, that's the way I felt. So I didn't ask, and he was mad that I didn't ask him about this, and once he texted me and confirmed that this wasn't true, I put it in the comment section, I pinned the comment, I added the question marks, and it was like 30 minutes after I posted the video, so it wasn't really a clickbait title anymore. And in that podcast, he also says that I felt insulted, and yeah, I did, and I told him that. He was a little bit, you know, strong with his words, but that's Milos, I know he has a, a temper, so I don't take it, like, I, I'm not mad at him or anything like that, there is no beef, really. So I just wanted to address this for all you guys who were asking me this, especially guys from Serbia, from Balkans. There is no beef between us, I mean, he, he did say some nasty things, but I guess he had the right to, to be mad. Maybe not to say those things, he said. I'm not gonna show you what he told me, he, he said, actually, you can show this uh, online, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm just gonna say, like, there is no beef from my end, I don't know if he's still mad. I mean, I apologize, next time when I'm asking him, I'm gonna bother him for anything. But once again, I respect Milos too much to, like, truly be offended, like, he he's allowed to say... Whatever he wants to say, really. I mean, there is a limit, of course, but like what he said so far, I am not holding a grudge. And in the end of our conversation, he actually gave me some fatherly advices, which I'm going to actually gladly take, accept. So that's it. That's from my end. There is no beef as far as I'm concerned. 
All right, enough about me. Let's move on to more relevant topics. See bum Chris Bumstead with his new freaking insane physique update. And like I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, and I'm sure you're thinking the same thing. This guy needs to do the open. He needs to get his legs wet. He needs to try and do an open show again. Yes, again, he turned pro in the open. And that was like 10 years ago. 10 years ago, he came up so much since then. He progressed so much. I mean, there are guys who turned pro and like two years later, one year later, they're on the Mr. Olympia stage in open, like Nick Walker, like uh, Martin Fitzwater, like Hunter Labrad. I don't know, so many of them. Uh, Kevin Lebroni back in the day, like he turned pro the same year and he was second at the Mr. Olympia the same year. Chris Bumstead turned pro in the Open 10 years ago, basically, I'm not sure how many years, but like a long time ago. And yeah, sure, he stayed in classic, he didn't grow that much, but take a look at him right now. I mean, he's not as heavy as the Open bodybuilders today. Things are different, of course, back in the 90s, you turned pro in the Open, like you were already, you know, basically there, you were already ready to compete against the against the other pros, but today, of course, it's different, you need to, in most cases, you need to work for a long time to reach the top, but there are special bodybuilders who, like, turn pro, and, like, a year or two later, they're already at the top, and Chris Bumstead probably could have been one of those guys, I mean, maybe not, maybe he's a little bit too tall, and, like, has some weaknesses, like arms and back, I don't know, but, like, at this point... The way he's looking right now, I mean, I'm not saying he could win a pro show, but I think we should see him, at least, against some, like, mid-level pros, right? I mean, he's hitting the most muscular here, and it's actually looking really good, like, his arms used to be a weak point for him, they are definitely not a weak point anymore, like, sure, the insertions are short, but, like, those arms are not small anymore, like, those arms are definitely not a glaring weakness anymore, so he improved that significantly. The chest, the chest is one of the biggest chests in the world, I mean, literally, like, I'm sure the open guys, a lot of the open guys don't have chest this big. And, like, his structure, his shape, once he is shredded, and, like, if he peaks for the open, like, stays as full as possible, doesn't care about the weight, maybe gets a little bit less conditioned, if he does, like, a show after the Mr. Olympia, like, I don't know which shows there are, like, uh, Romania Pro, Prague Pro, something like that, if he did that, man, like, I'm sure he would be, maybe he would even win, I mean, pff, Prague Pro against Nexila, I don't think so, because... There will be a huge size discrepancy there, but like uh, Romania Pro maybe or something like that against Horse MD and guys like that. I can I can maybe even see him winning that kind of a show. And if he won any pro level open show, man, that would be a huge achievement. As you noticed, I'm not even talking about him as far as the classic physique, Mr. Olympia, because that's really not fun. Like that hasn't been fun for a long time. I mean. We can always say he's going to win, again, easily, and that's it. And that's probably going to happen. Maybe this year there is somebody who could potentially push him a little bit more. We're going to talk about that guy in a second, but that's about that, that's as far as it goes. Somebody may push him. <laughs> he's going to win the Classic Physique Mr. Olympia. It's too easy for him. I want to see him do the Open. And I'm telling you guys, he could do well. He could do really well. If you guys disagree, feel free to tell me down below, but... Guys, guys, take a look at this once again. Crazy. Super impressive. Now, here is the guy that could potentially, the only guy, in my opinion, who could potentially truly push Chris on the classic physique Mr. Olympia stage because Wesley Wissers is basically the only guy that has the structure, the stature, the size, the height, the, let's call it freak factor, but it's probably like a classic factor, whatever you want to call it. Like, he has a lot of tools that can potentially not hurt Chris Bumstead, but, like, push him. That, that's the only way I can put it. Everybody else is basically a, a weaker version of Chris Bumstead. You know, Ramon Dino, Urskaletsinski, Brian Ainsley, all the other guys, like, they're all kind of classic and, like, conditioned and they have nice shape or whatever, but nobody has this, this impressiveness, this, this, this wow factor that the Wesley Research has. But, if we're being realistic, the problem that Wesley has is, even though he maybe has, like, even maybe even more of the wow factor, he still has more weaknesses. He's less complete than Chris. So, once again, hear me out. Maybe a little bit more of the wow factor, but definitely less of the completeness. And that's why I don't see him beating Chris. 
Maybe if Chris is off and Wesley is like even more, even better peaked than at the Arnold Classic, but what are the odds of that happening? Not very high. And then at the same time, we also got a new physique update from Ramon Dino, who is also showing us his back, who is probably definitely in better condition than Wesley Visters at this point, I would say from the back at least. He's already in really good shape and already has like very good fullness and hardness and roundness. And him versus Wesley, that's a true rivalry. I mean, Wesley beat him at the Arnold Classic. All the times before that, Ramon placed ahead of Wesley. But of course, the Arnold Classic, Ramon was off. Wesley was 100% uh, on. So at the Olympia, I think the case is going to be different. I think Ramon is going to be so on. But even if both of these guys are 100% on, who would win? Now, in this case, I would say Ramon has probably better completeness. But he has a lot less of the wow factor. His physique, it's nice. It's definitely aesthetic. But it's not super classic. It's not as classic as Chris Bumstead's. And it's definitely not as classic as Wesley's. But he can bring really good conditioning. His posing is usually not great. But, you know, maybe he improved it. Wesley's posing is awesome. And he knows how to bring conditioning finally this year. Hopefully he will repeat what he brought to the Arnold Classic to the Mr. Olympia stage. So if both of these guys are on... I still have Wesley placing ahead, but we'll see if Wesley is going to be consistent, actually, or if Arnold Classic was a fluke, I don't know. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, for more content like this, guys, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, thank you so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye-bye.